Hi guys, John here. This video today is going to be an update video on my Aqua One Mini Reef 120. Um, now, on the last video, I uh, believe I just had uh, gotten three new anemones and uh, <clears throat> may or may not have uh, changed the rock work up a bit. Um, in this video, I have uh, done quite a few new things. If you um, have been following me, you, you'll be able to see quite uh, well that my rock work is uh, more or less completely changed and uh, I have quite a few new corals in the tank. Um, I'll just pump the brightness up on the tank. Um, so like I said, you can see that uh, there's quite a few new things. For you guys that don't uh, know or don't follow me, um, this is a series on my uh, Aqua One Mini Reef 120 that has been up and running for around five and a half uh, or just about six months now. Um, and uh, it's a series through the progression of the tank and uh, the things I do and the things I can advise you guys on doing. Um, uh, like last uh, episode, I covered, uh, I got some anemones, I added Chemipure to the tank and uh, added quite, um, not a lot, but quite a few new uh, corals uh, or anemones as you might say. Um, now this tank, um, I'll go through the stock list of uh, what it was and uh, what it is now. Uh, what I had in the tank was a pair of clownfish, um, was a Melanaris wrasse, which you might be able to see swimming around at the back, a bicolor blenny, which is in one of the rock works, and a Heraldi angel or a yellow angel fish. Um, I sadly had to give my uh, and a starfish, if you just saw, had a fall down right there. Um, I did have a uh, like I said, a Heraldi angelfish, but uh, I had to give that away as it was just a bit too aggressive towards my clownfish. Um, and that's the only uh, loss, or not loss, but difference with fish uh, stock being given away. But I have recently got two new clownfish, uh, and these are just black, ocellar, black and white Ocellaris clownfish. And then I'll show you my pair of clownfish, which are uh, really nice designer clownfish or uh, photon clownfish. Um, now, the reason why they're in what I like to call the sin bin or just a bit of a jail in there is because they were the initial clowns in the tank. They had already established an anemone, uh, which is that quite a large um, coral in there. They had already established that, that was theirs. Um, and now after the angel fish gone, I felt I needed to add a bit more fish to the tank. Um, now that the aggression level has gone down. Um, and uh, so I uh, chose to add two new clownfish. And uh, in saying that, um, some people might not think that's a good idea. Some people say, go for it, it's a challenge, but you can do it. Um, but with an established pair of clownfish already in the tank, it wasn't, or it isn't the best idea to add two new clowns to the tank. You'll see a lot of aggression, you'll see a lot of fighting. But uh, in the end, you should see uh, some, some sort of a, a solution uh, come about this. Um, if that's one clown dying and the other one being accepted or both having to be given away or even both being accepted, I've heard in some cases, that might be the case. Um, so I'll just give you a rundown of why I put them up there. Because they were an established pair in the, in the anemone, um, they obviously had asserted their dominance and territories. Um, now, after adding these clowns, the new black and white Ocellaris clowns, you can see, um, see if I can get a picture or a video of, see their tails or the bottom fins are uh, in a way quite nipped. Um, see if that focuses on them. You can see there's a bit of a nip all over the tail. Um, and that's obviously just due to some uh, aggression of the male and female. Um, so I have now put them in that, uh, in that little breeder box and uh, I'm leaving, in them, them, leaving them in there for a day or two um, just so they can see that these clownfish mean no harm to them and will be living in the tank with them regardless of what they think. Um, and that's something you can see they're interacting, they're going up to the breeder box um, even though those fish do want to come out. Uh, I'm not gonna let them out until uh, I feel it's necessary and uh, okay to. And uh, hopefully by the end of this, maybe week to two week process of introducing and taking some out and back in, they should be fairly integrated uh, uh, successfully into the tank. Um, now in saying that, the new corals I have added 
I have added, I believe, three new pieces of coral to the tank since my last video. Maybe it's just the two. Um, I'm not sure if I um, had made a, um, a video of one of the zoanthids I had got, but if not, I'll just go over that again. Um, so the, the, the corals um, in my tank at the moment, I'll get a bit of a back shot so I can uh, point to them and show you. I have an elegance coral or a giardini. I have a bubble tip anemone. I've got another bubble tip anemone and this one you can't really see. You can see that is a, uh, let's see if that focuses with the light that's on the tank. Oh, let's see. You can see that fairly well. It's a, um, it's not bleached. It's just still called a crisper anemone. So they're white with purple tips. Um, because it's so white and with the light, it's a little bit hard for the camera to pick up. Um, so I've got that. So I've got three anemones. So the giardini, the anemone, anemone, anemone. I have some green star polyps you can see in the back, which are very nice. I have two torch corals. I have a green tip torch coral and a uh, toxic green torch coral. Um, and those are my two torches at the moment, um, along with my uh, mottled hammer coral. So that is a toxic green and a, I'd like to say purple or almost maroon color. And then this one is closed, but it's a, a frog spawn slash, uh, it's a hybrid, it's a frog spawn torch coral, which is pretty interesting. Um, also, I've got two pieces of SPS, which really aren't doing too good in my tank due to my Blenny likes to pick up or pick on anything in the tank. I'll just give you a quick shot of that and what they look like. That's a Dallas and a bird's nest, but you can see they're not very open or colorful at the moment. Um, and then down here, I have my um, zoanthids and brain coral. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There you go. So I have a, a big zoanthid rock with three types of zoas and palithelba, I just call them all zoanthids. So I've got this orange zoas, um, three green zoas down there, and then the big zoanthids here and I've got these uh, these uh, green and orange ones then these big p uh, pink ones and then the yellow uh, not yellow uh, big green ones and then I have a, um, a uh, flat brain coral with I'm not sure if that's a baby <coughs> or a different coral altogether but I just believe it's a baby and that's uh, obviously growing great so I'll just give you a close-up of all these uh, corals so you can see what they're about so that's the elegance coral that's my anemone. It's a nice, my nice bubble tip. My green star polyps and torch. My other torch, which is very good. It's actually nighttime now. I've just put the lights up for a video, so all the corals are um, pretty much going to bed and closing. Um, then I've got my mottle, which is a toxic green and purple, which is quite awesome. And then that hybrid, which I was talking about. And then back to the zoanthids. Um, so that's all to really cover up what happens uh, over that course of, I, I believe, only a couple of days. Um, I will definitely be uh, hoping that these uh, these clownfish pair up nicely and uh, can uh, withstand the punishment that they sometimes get. Um, my ras is usually normally out, but he was actually under the sand. He actually sleeps in the sand bed and uh, he came up because the lights were on thinking there must have been something to eat. And now that he's realized uh, there's nothing to eat, he's looking for a new spot. Um, now, I'd also like to go over the sand bed. Um, a lot of people and me including, uh, myself including, included, were ha I was having a lot of diatom or brown algae problems. So if you can see on the sand bed, you can see I have um, very minimal, and I mean extremely minimal uh, brown or diatom on the sand bed. And I only have um, a bit of algae on just at the, the corners of the glass where I can't grab get with the scrubber. Um, but that was due to, I believe, a phosphate issue in my tank. Um, you can see the um, algae just on the sides of the glass at the bottom and uh, a bit at that back corner, um, which should be easy to get off, but sometimes can be a pain. Um, so like I said, I always put my diatom issues down to uh, having extended light hours, but after I um, fiddled around with my 
AI Prime, I have this uh, an Aqua Illumination Prime on the tank on my 120 litre system. Um, it actually, I bumped the hours up and I noticed that they weren't getting any worse and in a way weren't getting any better. So I said that can't be uh, an attributing uh, factor as to why I'm getting diatoms. So I um, always have had lower phosphates in my tank, um, but my phosphates did creep up on me. Um, I run my tank, if you can see here, these are my tank parameters. So you can stop the video and have a look, but as of the 10th and it's the 13th today, the last one, my phosphate, if you can see, was 0.07. Um, now, to some people that's extremely low and to some uh, others that's really high. Um, my phosphate, if you can see, runs uh, between, uh, as of as of like um, the first of the, like the 11th, um, they run at uh, 0 0.5, um, no, 0 0.05 and uh, zero in a way. I'll just turn this light back on because somehow turned off. Um, and uh, that's what my uh, my tank parameters. So you can see uh, all my calcium and alkalinity and carbon and stuff like that, salinity. Um, if you guys are, are wondering what my uh, parameters are, those is what they are. Um, now, when I realized my phosphates were creeping up on me, um, I didn't write it down on here, but they were 0.21, so they were back at this level. And I was having a lot of diatoms, not only on the ground, but the glass, this glass in a day was covered with brown algae and it was really unsightly and not something you would have wanted in a tank that you spend a lot of money and time on. So uh, in, in, in noticing that change, I took um, the precautionary measure and uh, got some Kemi Pure. Um, Kemi Pure Blue, I, is, uh, I've spoken about this uh, maybe in just in my last video. I must say I have seen a huge improvement in my tanks health and uh, let's see if that focuses a huge improvement in my tanks health and well-being um, after adding this my water clarity is absolutely phenomenal uh, crystal clear I didn't realize um, my tank was actually had yellow pigment until I added the chemi pure and saw the difference um, but if you if you if you're most likely not using any activated carbon or carbon on your tank you have yellow pigment but you just don't realize it because you're looking at your tank every day um, but it definitely made a difference and this takes out silicates from the water which diatoms thrive on and also phosphates um, i'll show you my sump down here and uh, show you uh, what i have going on so it's just the uh, the sump that came with the with the actual system and you can see I have some uh, some marine pure balls and there's my chemi pure bag and it is being actively run through so meaning water is uh, constantly being pushed through it um, if you can see that tube coming off there that's coming from my chiller and uh, it's always water is being pushed through that so therefore it can clean and remove phosphate I have a refugium my skimmer a filter sock and my um, uh, Fosgard, but my Fosgard was depleted and uh, I've actually, um, uh, I haven't changed that out um, in the tank yet. Um, so that's around two months old, that Fosgard in the tank. So I need to get rid of that. But in the addition of adding the Chemi Pure, I have uh, not had to spend uh, the money to get uh, uh, get any more Fosgard, but I will be getting more Fosgard just to lower my phosphate to, to 0 0.00. Um, along with my nitrates are <coughs> more or less uh, 5 and below. Um, so on the test kits I use, they're the API, they're, you can't exactly really tell the difference between 5 and 0 because they go up in 5s, I believe, or well at least uh, my fish stores one does. And uh, I I have either five or zero phosphate. So you can see I'm growing Kato uh, and Calerpa in the same one. I've got Calerpa uh, growing on the side and then Kato Morpha or Kato or however you want to pronounce it, growing, uh, growing on the bottom. And that's just lit by a normal LED globe um, 
if you can see that just a just an LED globe nothing special and it's just suspended on the top of my tank um, through a bolt uh, going into the tank um, and no further than the width of I'd just say the top of my thumb because obviously you don't want to uh, go through and puncture the glass um, so this video was obviously a little bit longer today, but I have added a lot more coral and fish to the tank and uh, everything is going fabulously. Um, I'll keep you guys updated of what's the go with these clownfish. Um, I might uh, have to even give them back or um, hopefully they get integrated perfectly. I've got plenty of uh, space for them to, to go. I've got plenty of area for them to, to be and I've got plenty of anemones and corals for them to host. I know for a fact my clownfish took to hosting the anemone as soon as I got it and uh, hopefully these two um, tank bred clowns realize that there are two more anemones um, or all these corals which are more or less anemone like to go host in. Um, but I'd like, yeah, like I said, uh, Kemi Pure Blue, thumbs up to them, give them props. They, uh, they uh, definitely uh, can uh, uh, claim all their stuff they are uh, saying on their on their containers and uh, everything's going flawlessly um, so I'll just give you one last overall look at the tank and uh, I'd just like to say a big thank you to all my subscribers and I have um, I've got Facebook and Instagram link is in the description um, any questions you'd like to ask go on Facebook um, you can check out all my photos on uh, Facebook and Instagram um, I've just started the Instagram account so I'll be uploading uploading slowly uh, videos, um, not videos, uh, photos on that. Um, but Facebook, any questions uh, or you just want to check out some cool photos of the animals and see how they're going, um, that's the place to go. Um, so, all right, catch you in the next video.